Hi, I am Yvonne Jones, the Member of Parliament for Labrador. Every June, Canadians celebrate National Aboriginal History Month, and this is an opportunity for us to honour the heritage, contributions and cultures of First Nations, Métis and Inuit communities across the land we share with them. It's also a month for us to reflect on the struggles and hardships that Indigenous people have faced throughout our shared history and celebrate their resilience. Today, I would like to talk to you about the significance of treaties, the nation-to-nation -nation and Inuit-to-Crown relationship between Indigenous peoples and Canada. The Royal Proclamation of 1763 is widely considered the founding document of Canada's formal relationship with Indigenous peoples. This document recognized the sovereignty of Indigenous peoples' territories and their rights. It also laid out how the government should enter into treaties with First Nations. As Canada became its own country, the spirit to negotiate with Indigenous peoples on this nation-to-nation, -nation, Inuit to Crown basis was lost. Indigenous nations were seen to be in the way of natural resources and natural expansion. Our culture and traditions were seen as backwards and the government began a rampant effort to civilize Indigenous peoples. As new treaties were signed and the Indian Act came into force, things changed for Indigenous people. A reserve system was imposed upon First Nations to live in small, remote sections of land. This allowed settlers and industry to take over favorable areas. Reserves dislocated many First Nations people from their traditional communities and put the federal government in charge of all of their affairs. But Indigenous people were resilient in voicing their frustrations with government. As time went on, courts in Canada made key decisions for Indigenous rights. Some of the problematic elements of the Indian Act were changed and modern treaties began to shape a new way forward for Indigenous people. In 1975, the James Bay and Northern Quebec Agreement was signed. It included land agreements for the Cree First Nations and Inuit people living in those regions. This agreement is an example of a modern day relationship with the Canadian Crown, where there is respect for the self-determination of Indigenous nations. Treaty making in Canada has been a difficult, painful history and continues to be a challenge. But by recognizing this and the need to uphold treaty promises, we can build partnerships and uphold the self-determination of Indigenous nations. This month, I encourage you all to learn about the history, culture and traditions of Indigenous people in your community. As our Prime Minister has said, the first step to true reconciliation is learning more about one another. As we move forward on this journey, let's take time every day to promote, respect, understand and appreciate one another. Thank you.